Hello and welcome back to my channel and this series of videos where we go over building a Nest.js um, GraphQL server. In this specific video, we'll be adding Prisma on top of the Nest.js uh, GraphQL server that we built in the last video. Jumping straight into it, if you like my videos, please support me. You can follow me on Twitter, follow me on Dev.2, click the like button down uh, below, click the subscribe button, click that little notification bell, or just visit my website at thewebdevcoach.com. Uh, shoot me a message, would love to hear from you. And thank you everyone who has been leaving me comments. That support keeps me going and keeps me uploading these free videos and these free tutorials. If you want to learn anything in web development that I have not covered, also feel free to leave a comment below on what you think I should cover. Now, before I start with this video, I do want to point out that this is the second video in a series of videos that I am doing about Nest.js and GraphQL. There are also blog posts and a GitHub repository available with this code if you learn better that way, and you can find those links in the description below. Before we get started with adding Prisma to our Nest.js GraphQL server, we should define exactly what Prisma is and why we're using Prisma. Uh, Prisma is a data layer between our database and the server that we're creating. Uh, it'll allow us to more easily communicate with our database via GraphQL queries and GraphQL migrations. Uh, Prisma will generate server-side code in TypeScript with a TypeScript client that uh, allows us to easily manipulate the database uh, given the GraphQL queries that we receive. If you want to learn more about Prisma, go ahead, feel free and go to prisma.io and uh, learn more. With all that lecture out of the way, let's get to some code. I'd love to pick up where we left off in the last video. And um, basically you'll be able to run uh, npm run start dev to stand up or start a uh, local local server. This local server will run on localhost 3000 forward slash GraphQL specifically for the GraphQL portion of that server. So let's go ahead and a, uh, go to localhost 3000 forward slash GraphQL. Uh, notice that it's not running yet. And then once you see all this, that'll confirm that uh, it's running. So our GraphQL playground will load. Our first query allows us to get all the messages. So I can see here that I have a seed message. I can change the description, add a new message, create a message, get the new seed message, and then create all messages again to get both of the messages that we have. Now, what we want to do is replace our messages array with a uh, real live database using Prisma. Let's get started by making our project compatible with Prisma. The first thing we need to do is install the Prisma CLI, which is just as easy as npm install hyphen G Prisma. We can do that. Or if we're using yarn, yarn global add Prisma. Press enter, and this should kick off the installation project process for the Prisma CLI. Uh, once that's done installing, we should which should take a second here, we can go ahead and run Prisma in it. Now at this point, it may ask you to create a Prisma account or log into your already existing uh, Prisma account. Go ahead and do that. No worries, Prisma does not cost um, any money for the free tier. It won't even ask you for a credit card. Uh, this part is pretty important in the uh, configuration process. We'll be using a demo server and a MySQL database. Uh, this is just a development server to play around with. Here you'll choose a region, not very important. Choose the name of your service and the stage. And here it'll ask what programming language to generate the Prisma client with. We'll actually choose don't generate because we'll be using the Prisma binding uh, package later to generate um, a more Nest.js friendly Prisma client. So don't generate for now, we'll do that later. And if you did everything correctly, two new files will be created, prisma.yaml and datamodel.prisma. Uh, 
Data model .prisma will uh, have a boilerplate user data model, which we'll replace with our message. Uh, let's do that now. Let's go here. We have our type message. Again, this is in our schema.graphql from the last video, and paste that into our data model .schema. Now, in ID, Prisma comes with an ID decorator, and that'll tell uh, That'll tell Prisma to tell the database to make ID the primary key of the message table. So we can save that, and um, schema.graphql will no longer be used. We'll use data model.prisma instead. So thank schema.graphql for its service and delete it. Now, prisma.yaml has information about our uh, Prisma server. This is the endpoint here, and the data model is located at data model .prisma. Uh, Not much so far, but our project is ready to use Prisma as the uh, backend, I'm sorry, as the database and the data layer. So here, it tells us that we can deploy our Prisma service. What that'll do is basically uh, initialize the database, get it ready for our message data model, and let's run it and see what happens. All right, so it's done running. Uh, it says here that my service is already up to date. That's because I created this tutorial already and my database is already synced up with a message table. Your deployment will look a little different. It'll basically tell us that the message was created in the database and you're all ready to start with Prisma. Now, what we need is a GraphQL schema. Luckily, Prisma will generate all that for us. Uh, up above, we said don't generate, and that's because we need a custom way to create a Prisma binding using a Prisma binding package that'll work correctly with our Nest.js. Uh, first thing we need to do is um, install the GraphQL CLI. As usual, you can do it with npm install GraphQL CLI, or you can do yarn global add GraphQL CLI. And again, this will add GraphQL CLI to the uh, global workspace so you can use it from any directory in the terminal. All done installing. Now, as we did with the Prisma CLI, let's init the uh, GraphQL CLI and get our project ready uh, with a GraphQL config. So we can enter the project name. We'll name it the same thing that we named this up here. So Nest.js GraphQL tutorial for me, something different for you. We'll uh, enter the local schema path and I want this local schema path to live at source prisma schema.graphql. Uh, it'll tell you that a parent directory of source prisma does not exist. So let's create one. Now it exists. So source prisma schema.graphql. The endpoint URL will be our uh, prisma endpoint. So let's scroll up and find that. I can't find it there. So let's go to our prisma.yaml, copy and paste it from here. And the name of this endpoint will be dev. There's no different subscription URL, and we are not adding any other endpoints. I'll use the YAML format, and that looks okay to me. So with that, uh, we have a new GraphQL configuration, which looks something like this. Now we can get the schema by running GraphQL get schema. After that's finished running, a new schema.graphql will be created here in our uh, Prisma folder. And you can see here that it has everything we need uh, to create a message. Message there, etc., etc. Perfect. Now we need to bind our Nest.js GraphQL server with Prisma. And we'll be doing, doing this using the Prisma binding package. So yarn add Prisma binding, or if you're using NPM, NPM install Prisma binding. And again, this will allow us to write the resolvers for the Prisma service. It's all done installing. And let's go back. You'll see in our package.json, obviously uh, Prisma binding was added. We need to tell our GraphQL CLI to use the Prisma binding generator to generate our GraphQL schema. 
So let's add an extension called CodeGen. A, the generator that we're going to use is called Prisma Binding. The language that we want this GraphQL API to be written in is TypeScript. The output will be the binding is source prisma prisma.binding.ts. That'll be the name of the TypeScript uh, prisma binding. And here we can finally run GraphQL code gen. Press enter. This will take a minute or so to run. You see here that I actually have a um, error where our GraphQL modules are different. And that's because I probably have here in our package.json a uh, GraphQL 14.5.6, while my GraphQL CLI is likely using an updated version, 14.5.8. So let me upgrade GraphQL, and then this error should go away. Let's try GraphQL CoGen one more time with our new upgraded uh, GraphQL binary. It runs successfully now that we upgraded our uh, GraphQL binary in our project. And here we have the Prisma binding that we need. We'll be using this in our uh, Prisma service that we'll create later. Go ahead, go through the Prisma binding uh, type script. Don't be too intimidated or too upset if you don't understand what's going on here. Uh, we'll, we'll use it later in a Prisma service. But again, the details of the file are not important. With this binding all ready to go, uh, we can use it in our uh, TypeScript, in our code. So the first thing we want to do is generate a new uh, Prisma module. The way we do that is nest generate, let me get this error out of the way, module Prisma. Uh, that'll generate a nest module and link it up into our app module. There we are. We have a Prisma module here imported in our app.module, and a new empty Prisma module. The next thing we want to do is create a Prisma service, and this service's responsibility will be interacting with the Prisma data layer. That is uh, reading data, creating data, updating data, and deleting data. Once we have that generated, it'll be um, here provided in the Prisma module. Now for other resolvers, let's say specifically our messages resolver, or for other modules to use this Prisma service, we'll need to export this out of our Prisma module. That's just a feature of Nest, and that's just something I guess you'll need to get used to. Now let's go into our Prisma service. Uh, just an FYI, this Prisma spec we won't be using, that's the testing module. Anywho, in our Prisma service, what we'll want to do is make this an instance of our Prisma binding. And that is uh, uh, something that will have all of the resolvers built into it, the create messages, the delete messages, etc., etc. So to do this, we'll actually import Prisma for more from our Prisma.binding. Uh, we'll extend Prisma here. And, oops, not Prisma module, just Prisma. And in our constructor, we'll call the super constructor, and that is the constructor of the Prisma instance, and pass in an endpoint. Now, what this endpoint will be is our uh, Prisma endpoint that we got from our Prisma.yaml. That should be it. We can get out of there. Now we want to use our new Prisma service in our messages resolver. To do that, we'll need to actually import the Prisma module in our messages module. This will make the uh, Prisma service available to our messages resolver. Uh, you see here, I forgot to import the Prisma module. And lastly, in our messages resolver, we'll want to inject the Prisma service. So let's actually import the Prisma service from uh, Prisma, Prisma.service. And here, the way injection works in Nest.js is we inject it via the uh, constructor. If you've ever done 
Angular, you'll see that this is very, very familiar. So we created our constructor here. We no longer need this messages that really should be in a database because we finally have a database. So let's delete that here. In messages, we'll have args. Oops. That are args. The I should say the name is args. Oh boy. I wish I knew how to code. There we are. And here this dot prisma dot query dot messages args. And what we're doing here is forwarding the uh, our query of messages to the Prisma service. The same thing we want to do uh, very similarly here. So we'll delete this description and we'll have args. And again, we'll forward this create message mutation to our um, Prisma service, just like that. Now, with that all written, let's go ahead and play with our new message resolver that should be interacting with our Prisma service. Now, let's go back to where we created or started the server back in the beginning of the video. Let's actually kill that server and uh, start a new one. This will basically create a new development server using the new code that we have. Once that server is up and ready to go, go ahead and go to localhost uh, 3000 forward slash uh, GraphQL, and your GraphQL playground should show up. Uh, when you query all messages, I already have messages created in my Prisma database, but when you query all messages, you should see no messages. You should probably see an empty array. Uh, we'll use the mutation create message here, but our argument will be completely different. Well, not completely different, but it'll actually be one args argument. And the way you write that is uh, with a object called data, and we'll create a new seed message here. Press play, we create that new seed message, and that new seed message will still be in our database. Again, this is a live, this live Prisma database up in, let's say, Heroku, most likely, that you can, um, you can shut down the server and still hit that same database. Uh, this is how you put Prisma on top of a Nest.js GraphQL server. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like, please click subscribe, leave a comment, and thanks. thank you all for listening. I hope this video helped.